That's the power of the canvas of life, people. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> We just chatting, we just vibing, we singing. We wanna come through. What song are you gonna sing this week? No song this week. No song? Oh no way. So how do we start off then? Hi. Nah, come on. <laughs> nah, you got a song, haven't you? You have got a song. I'm telling you off, but oh, 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 oh. That's a dead song. That was a I'm dead song. Sing it again, bro. Dead singing. Do you watch, do you watch Modern Family, by the way? Modern Family. Yeah, well, it's coming towards the end, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I've been watching the last couple of episodes. I've actually watched has it finished yet? 11 seasons. Yeah, it's same. About to yeah, same, same, same. Wait, has it's it finished? There, Did you uh, say finished? Yeah, it's finished. And it's the last season. I think it's the last. But have they shown the last episode? Because I, I, I've, I've, like, I haven't caught so. up. Like, I'm on the last season, obviously, but I haven't caught up with it. Did you know the one where David Beckham was in it? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that, man. Yeah. That was a good episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they're on the rooftop doing the little bath shit. Yeah, I saw that. Who's your, who's your favorite? Who is my favorite character? Oh, I don't know. Oh, probably Phil. Phil? Yeah. It's just a goof yeah. in it. Who's your favourite? It's a cross. A cross? Is that, is that word? It's a cross that between... Sense, yeah, it's a cross between Claire. Okay. Actually, no. No. No, <laughs> no, no you said it. You said no. it. Mm-hmm. The thing is, yeah, I think it's Cam. Cam, Cam. Yeah, yeah. no, he's funny, though. He is funny. Yeah, because he's like... It's just the, the way he's... um. What's the word I'm looking for? He's extra. <laughs> <laughs> Their drugs he's full of late. drama, right? Yeah, and I, like <laughs> that, I don't know. It just makes me laugh every time because, because like, he's like the kind of person you that would you, you would roll your eyes at all the time, but they're actually funny as well. Yeah, he's a donut. Manny's also funny as well. Yeah, yeah, he is. To be fair, who do you who do you think is the most annoying? Oh, see, I would have said Claire was the most annoying, but not 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 that I I don't like a character. It's just if I was to define, if I had to pick, if I was like forced to pick one that's annoying, I would pick hers. But it's not to say that. I don't like a character. What about you? Mitch. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. Who's Mitch again? Cam's husband. Oh, Ginger. right. Yeah, yeah. Now, he is annoying though. So we're basically saying they're just, a, they're two annoying siblings. Yeah. Basically. But, but I like Claire though. I think, I think she's crazy. Yeah, no, I like him. I like him. Yeah, but I like her. Or, is, or is I find Mitch. I think if oh, I you find him one, annoying, one, annoying. I'd find him annoying, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know how I'd roll, uh, how I'd roll at Cam, like, but I still like laugh. I'd roll at Mitch, but I wouldn't laugh. Like, necessarily, I'd be like, here we go again. Oh, okay, okay. But I like Alex. I, re- I think I relate more to Alex just because of what she does and the fact that she's got into science and all that kind of stuff. I relate to that a lot more than I do with the rest. So you feel out of the whole show, you're mostly like Alex. I don't know who but I mostly. Of- I don't know who I relate to the most. If you, had, if I was to ask you, who do I seem similar to in the show? Who would you say? Phil. Yeah, cause see, I was thinking that as well. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know why. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why The reason why I say Alex as well Is also because I think I'm a warrior Like her So the fact that She stresses about little things I feel like I'm like that as Oh well you mean you're bit. a As in you worry a lot Not as in like You're a soldier yeah. Oh okay I thought you were like No 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 not, 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 not a soldier like that I feel like I feel like sometimes I sweat the small things Like she does Yeah so That's why I relate to her the most Why did you think I was like Phil? Because He he he, he can be annoying <laughs> 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 That's not what I was going with, Phil, but okay. But, 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 he's good vibes. He's got a good heart. Um, yeah. Um, I like, you know, you know, you know, he's actually like, he's a good person, I feel. Um, yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say Phil. I'd say Phil. Yeah, no, I was thinking of Phil because like, I don't know. I just find the humor. I've got some similar sense in humor to Phil in one way or another. That's probably why I relate to him the most. Do you know why I would say you also not like Phil? What? Well, because eh? Phil's not very bright. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing that I would take apart yeah that, but yeah no nah, otherwise yeah i do i share a lot of similarities to phil I, I can't think of any other character that i'd match to but if i was to say who do you remind me of the most hmm alex is a good show sometime you can be like what's uh, gloria's husband jay jay <laughs> <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes it depends what mood you're in <laughs> why jay though why jay because sometimes when you're grumpy you're like jay you remind me of jay that's why <laughs> oh, okay. yeah that's fair that's fair that's fair but otherwise yeah no alex is a good shout for sure yeah that's pretty interesting but now modern family is a good show I, I think it's up there there's another show that everyone keeps talking about i can't remember what it's called on it's it's very similar to modern family in a sense that it tries to depict modern yeah basically that literally modern families but i can't remember quite remember what it's called if you've seen Scrubs, it's the the guy who plays the janitor in Scrubs. He takes the lead role. Oh, Malcolm in 
the middle. Bro, no, that's it's not Malcolm in the no, middle. No, the middle, the middle, the middle, the middle. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the middle. The that's middle. What it's called the middle, not Malcolm in the middle. It's called the middle. The yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, haven't yeah. seen that yet, but I've been recommended that a few times. I've yeah, I've watched that before. But I've never really got through it. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like it's like Modern Family is a real feel good show in the in the sense that it's a comedy, but it also has like like it kind of reminds you on how families go through like issues and how families can be dysfunctional and how families are thinking. But if you all go through together, you make like, it. Like, all together, you, you yeah, you get through it. And I think like it, don't know, it just it just it just shows you that families aren't perfect. Mm, and I yeah. like that, like it's real because yeah. it, it's not like because a lot of people, like we live in a world where people like to pretend that everything is fine, everything's okay. And this show kind of shows why, kind of shows that things aren't always as perfect as it seems. And families do go through things, people do go through things. And for me, I think that's what makes it a good show. It's probably just after some of like my favorite shows. Like you'd rate it quite highly, would so you'd rank it quite highly in your in your list. Yeah, really. Yeah, okay. but not 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 when it gets to like The Office for me I think The Office is probably it's elite right the greatest comedy oh do you know what we need to do? do have you seen people doing the tier list we should do one for these shows well the top tier for me would be like The Office just to, uh, to clarify for the people that's US or UK the US first but the UK is also is also up there I wish the UK had more more seasons because the UK it only had a couple didn't it yeah I think I don't think I've ever watched a show where I've literally laughed, felt emotional, probably cry, like wanted to cry all like in one. Just the, it just has ah, so many things. It's, it's one of the only few shows I've watched um the whole way through more than once. Oh really? Yeah, I've watched it. I've watched. I've watched it a few times. So not even Friends. Or, or friends. Friends. I watched Friends. Um, I've also watched Friends all the way through a couple of times. Like How literally about, from start to finish. There's a show that I've watched recently, not all the way from the beginning again, but like from let's say season seven, and that was How I Met Your Mother. I've seen that as well, but only once. Only once. What did you think of it? I really. I love. I love. I, I, I really. Yeah. Yeah. I, really uh, I, if I was, I think the ending was was dead. But oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I agree with you. But every episode before that, man, I was laughing again. Like, cause only cause my housemate was watching again, I just jumped in for one episode and then next thing I found myself watching it over like next episode next episode because you just get dragged back into them and right at the end I was just like damn I'm gonna miss these characters and I've only watched like a season or two but it just it brought me back to how I was when I first started watching it as in like you really do invest in the characters and obviously the most important thing is whether you can relate to the characters that's what makes a good show a good show and a bad show a bad show is I think that is the thin ice whether you can relate to the characters characters what do you think i agree i think you'd be surprised when you look at, at how much time you've, you've invested in shows like i think about for example if you sit back and you think for example there's like 200 and something episodes of friends and i've seen every single one at least twice and some even more some even more like, for think sure. of how much how much time you spent on that or the office which has nine seasons and probably a hundred and something episodes as well how much time you are spent on that watching it at least at least twice every single episode and some even more again you just it really they, even though it's like sometimes I feel like sometimes you learn little things in there oh, for me, that's what I like about them it's, yes it's the realness sometimes there's like little life lessons you learn in these shows and you're like oh that's kind of cute or oh that's that's knowledgeable and I feel like sometimes because I'm someone I, I know so much about like ran- I know so many random facts I know so many like my general knowledge is quite good and that's because I actually I watch I watch a lot of um like television I watch a lot of documentaries I watch a lot of like videos and stuff like that because I don't know it's just something I read a lot as well but it's something that I I just like and like, I pick up so much from it and remember I was saying to you that how like I'm someone who I'm like I'm happy staying at home I'm not really someone who like I'm not like I've said in the previous episode I'm not really someone who is fussed about going out all the time like I can I can be happy at home watching watching something reading something and because of that I know so many random facts and that's also because of like all these shows that I watch so I, that's why I know a lot about like so like and also another show for example like Parks and Rec I learned so many little things about these little like what happens in like a little town in America and stuff like that all from watching all these kind of shows and for me like I don't know like I just I just really enjoy it uh, I just really enjoy them but if I, was to, if I was to create a list of like my top one I would say The Office is definitely number one we have lots of doubt Friends would be up there Big Bang Theory would also be up there I really I think that was the first ever show I binge watched from the beginning you saw I, I wouldn't I, think, put, I wouldn't put Big Bang Theory Big Bang theory in the elite list for some reason yeah, it is to me you would put it something it is an elite something list. sort of prevents me from doing that and i don't know why it's because i feel like if i was to compare it to shows like how i met your mother or malcolm in the middle or modern family I, it just doesn't quite hit right as all the office it just doesn't you know have the same feeling big bang, big bang theory is up there for me tell me it made science cool <laughs> yeah cool. True say, true say. like in a weird way because they're not exactly the coolest characters. Like Sheldon Leonard aren't exactly the coolest people. But this thing. <laughs> watching that, watching your hair far from it. 
Um, but watching that show made me want to like do science even more. I don't know. I, I just so that's why for me it's I, I, it has a feel good factor to it for me. That's why it's up there for me as well. As in, not to say it's not good. I like not to crap on no, anything. No, no, no. Like, but if I was to have that that difference between an elite list and a good list, I I've, something prevents me from putting it into elite. And I think maybe I just didn't. I loved it again. I loved it. I laughed all the way through it. But maybe I just didn't quite connect with the characters as much as I did in other shows. Like for example. Example, scrubs I, I, I love the the little bromance between two main characters or office you kind of invest and end up loving all the characters in that show f- literally from top to bottom of that list and then did you see the, the meme about how the different characters in, in the office would call coronavirus nah tell me uh, it's a classic ad. and it was literally something like okay jim would be like okay so it's called coronavirus dwight would be like actually it's covid19 <laughs> Shriek? Is it Shriek? No, not Shriek. What's the weird Packer? Packer would be like, uh, it's Chinese virus, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then Oscar would be like, actually, it's SARS COM 2. <laughs> and he would be like, it's Big Rona. <laughs> that sounds like Andy. <laughs> Oh, I forgot his name. I look at his face, but I can't. I forgot his name. The one that his name is actually real. That's his real name, and he's actually the weird old man. I forgot his name. Anyway, oh. he he speaks Mandarin and he speaks Chinese. Do you remember him? I know who you're talking about. It begins yeah. with a Z, wasn't it? I can't remember. It'll, it'll, it'll probably come up to me later. Kevin would be like weird flu. <laughs> <laughs> Angela would be like wrath of God. Uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Michael would be like kung flu. <laughs> And Stanley would be like, I don't care what it's called. I get to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> and that for me, I thought that was a That's perfect accurate. Meme, That's it actually, accurate. It's so accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, was, that was good. I hope they make a reunion episode. And I, th- not even, actually, no, they were going to do a reunion season, you know. Sometimes I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think sometimes it's left to just leave things. I think you're right. And I think it's not even sometimes. I think probably on most occasions. Well, it, it depends on how long after. Like, for example, you don't want to leave it for so long that it's lost its magic, as well as the fact that time can change, as in the circumstances. So the, the show just might not fit into the current ways of living. For example, a lot of the sh- uh, the jokes on Friend won't kind of pass in in the, these days. And, or I think... I, yeah, remember there was, a, um, there was like a thing where people were saying that, like there's so many like sexist jokes, racist jokes in Friends. Yeah. So, like now it wouldn't it wouldn't actually um, pass. But I think Friends is a show that can adapt though. I mean, just... Yeah, those jokes in those times it would pass i mean we've obviously lived through it and in those times it will people will find it funny and i think yeah sure the jokes that they used 20 years ago they can't bring it back but that's not to say that they can't adapt and find jokes that's suitable for this day and age yeah i guess so. i guess so. i guess i guess it's not it wouldn't be that much hard it wouldn't be that hard to adapt friends whereas i think like the office because the, like if, if you think about what they're selling paper it seems like quite an old industry and like and which is probably as it was like towards the end of it anyway they started to like start selling tablets and it started because it was it was dying out so for them to bring it back it it, maybe it'd be like a what are people doing now sort of season as opposed to going back to the office do you know what i mean yeah yeah i i think so yeah so that's why it'd be it'd be interesting but i think i i honestly would prefer to like leave us and if i if i miss it i'd rather go back and watch the old episodes again as opposed to looking forward to new episodes because i feel like i'll just ruin it and we don't want them to ruin it because you know when we like you're just ruining it you're just ruining it you're ruining it it. (laughs) (laughs) well i guess we've now got even longer to watch as many tv shows as we want really so the uk just announced an extended three week of lockdown and that's just minimum anyways what do you think about this jace it's funny because i saw a meme yeah it was like the government saying three week and another three weeks is like me saying i'm 20 minutes away it literally doesn't mean anything yeah, <laughs> yeah i saw that <laughs> and it's so true if, as if, well. if that doesn't explain it I, I don't think i don't know what does because it actually in three weeks time it could be another three weeks and then it could yeah be but i also yeah. think that it's, it's done for a reason because you don't want to be telling the public it will be two three months because that's when people start to lose hope because you can't trust some people to act in a mature 
sensible manner. Some people will hear two to three weeks and they'll go nuts and just start doing crazy things. So I think it is kind of sensible to put it or spin it in a smart way and just say, okay, we're going to limit it for three weeks for now because it then it gives people hope and then there's less panic. Yeah, no, I, I do I do see the point of it and I do agree with what you just said. It, it does make sense for them to obviously give it, uh, like drip feed people basically <laughs> three weeks at a time as opposed to tell people it's long term because like already people you can't even trust people to stay in the house and I think we've already mentioned this in the last and maybe in our previous episodes about how people just aren't, like weren't taking it seriously enough and that even like I think recently I saw a video of a, of a nurse who was literally angry at a group of kids who were literally just chilling in a park or she was walking past like coming back from work or something or going to work and she was literally angry at them because she said that I just spent a night shift trying to save people and trying to save lives and like people are dying and you know how stressful it is for us. And you that is must be things. so jarring. Yeah, and literally, I thought, ah, oh, like you could, you could see the emotion in her voice because it's kind of like she's literally seen people die at work because of this. And then she and then she comes out after like an exhausting shift or or whatever, and she's seen people like literally take the piss, and they're not following the guidelines and and trying to stay at home. I think like and these kids were, I think maybe like they're like maybe like teenagers, maybe like 16, 17. so they weren't exactly like young kids. They're old enough to know better. And like seeing them, it was just annoying. But then I also saw a video, we know the clap for N- the NHS on Thursday nights. I saw a video of it happen, I think, on like London Bridge. And it was... <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> all the people. And oh all my and I was literally like, God. you man are like, I was like, what is going on? Because you, you're clapping for the NHS, but you're actually making their work worse. Like you're making it so much harder. <laughs> because, because you're not, you're not staying at home and stopping it. Like you're, ah, oh, I thought you guys, this is frustrating. Like I thought, what a bunch of morons, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I actually couldn't believe it when I saw that video. I'm just like, oh, I don't know, man. It's just so funny because some people actually lack just logic. Like, come on, why are you? Oh my god! I bet the person who took the video and posted it probably was probably thinking, oh, look at everyone clapping for the NHS, and he didn't actually think, oh, but hold on a second, why are we all out here? Like, and we're making it worse, and then it's gonna be even worse <laughs> for the NHS. Yeah, I just I saw it and literally I was like, no, come on. Because the worst thing was like, yeah, they're all there, but they didn't even think to socially distance as well. <laughs> no, it looked like a busy street. I was, <laughs> oh man. When you were going out, have you been noticing emptier streets or? I went to get food yesterday um, and literally the street was, I I, I, was like, I felt so uncomfortable because I was like, I'm getting food. Like I'm literally getting food and going back home. I'm not like doing anything. And I'm literally seeing people and I, like it felt a lot busier than, I, than it has been when I've been out to get stuff. And I was thinking, wait, why is, it, why is this street so, it wasn't like busy, like a normal busy street, but it felt like it was a lot more people than there had been. I was like, you people, wait, I said, maybe we're all getting food at the same time. I was about to say, what if they were getting food as well? Yeah, it could be a case of like everyone, everyone, because it, it was like Friday evening. So I guess everyone kind of maybe wanted to take away or, or something and everyone thought, let me just go get food out. So maybe that could, that could be the reason why. But it did make me feel uncomfortable and I literally just wanted to get away as soon as possible. I don't know, have you, have you been noticing something similar? I think it depends on the time and the day. So for example, whenever I go closer towards the sunset, I see that the streets is almost like a ghost town. Except the other day where I needed to head out a little bit earlier to the shops and it was around two o'clock three o'clock and it was a very nice sunny day now the streets weren't packed but there was a lot more people than i noticed around seven or whatever and but to be fair you know people weren't just doing random stupid stuff they were for example i saw mums running on their with their push chairs with their kids in the push chair or joggers cyclists other people going to shops it's just more people on the streets than when i noticed before but yeah no i saw people abiding by rules and practicing social distancing it's really funny because i just find it especially when you go to the shops and people don't know how far they should stay away from each other or you know it's it's been really awkward like for example when i'm in the aisle and you're trying to go like in a one-way system and then you get the veg and you just realize you you left you forgot something a bit further (laughs) down (laughs) and then there's someone already in the aisle and you're just like all right i'm just going to pretend i'm going to look for something else closer to me rather than going down the aisle things like that it's funny and it's awkward but i find it like it's pretty nice when people are trying to practice it though it's, it's, it's good it's funny because um you go to some
from shop to shop. So you go to like Tesco, and Tesco have this like one way system where you can't go back, and you have to have to go all the way around if you wanna if you miss anything. But then you go to somewhere like Lidl, and I went there one day, and there's literally no rules. Like people are going here, there, there. I'm literally trying to avoid people. I'm trying to. Oh man, it was. But that's the difference like, between the two superstores, the isn't it? Yeah, the difference was funny. And let's, yes, yes, they were like the place I was getting food from. So they had a sign right saying only two people in the store at a time. Oh wow. So obviously I was I got in there. I was in there, ordered my food, <laughs> and the delivered like the delivery drivers who were obviously like picking up food to go deliver and stuff. They were all like walking in, and then the owner, or the clearly the boss of the, the manager, literally there was one. I think he got frustrated after a while, and he literally like basically in like in a thick Indian accent, he was like, "Can you basically asking them, can you not read?" <laughs> oh right. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny right the way like this this has not like can you not read like it clearly says two people in that time and they're all looking at each other <laughs> and i promise you no one no one left oh my god <laughs> no one left and and then there one of the other guys said to me i was gonna be another five minutes so i was like yeah i'm going outside because i'm not staying in there with, with all of them so i went outside and then i got called up for my food later on and i went out but it was funny because he literally was frustrated at them told them can you any of you read or whatever and literally none of them none of them no one left they all just stood there still and i was like wow Wow. <laughs> yeah. What did he say after that? Like when no one was moving, what did he say? Or did he just move on? I think he just gave up. He just gave up. How old were these people? Like why were they not? Oh, these are so these you telling like me they didn't? Men. They didn't respond at all. Not really. Not not that I not. They were literally just because they didn't leave. Oh, my remember God. I, I actually one of them was basically asking if his order was ready, and the man said no, and he still didn't leave. He just stood there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. oh do you know what i found really interesting is as in like how some takeaways have tried to adapt sorry not takeaways some restaurants have tried to adapt and survive during this climate by switching to just delivery only only and some have had such a high demand in orders that they've had to shut down completely because they can't keep up have you noticed that run so basically we've got a nice little chain here where i'm at and it's a really great restaurant they'd never done delivery before and when all the lockdown situation occurred they then switched to just delivery only in order to survive and stay afloat as a company and what they found is that after a week they'd had fourteen thousand calls and they couldn't keep oh. up they obviously were drained of any stock supply so they had to completely shut off delivery which is a shame i'm absolutely sad because generally the food was so good but yeah so it's stuff like that but then you have other franchises on the other end like dominoes who are smart enough and have the resources to survive I mean, so they've always been delivery delivery focused anyway so to them but what is, i like this is, this is how they've ad adapted though they have minimized their menu and simplified it so they can be quick and efficient with deliveries and they can get as many orders done as quick as possible. They've also hired taxi drivers so they have enough staff to cover all the deliveries and they also don't have to worry about stock supply. So, mm, yeah. That's yeah, that is really good house like it's really amazing how some people have adapted because and I think like stuff like Uber like Uber Eats, Just Eat, Deliveroo have also been a massive help to a lot of these like restaurants because they can they can basically get the orders and people can just order through those through those websites or apps or whatever but places like for example I think I think if like Nando's right did delivery I think they would kill it but obviously, obviously they shut down I know KFC are, apparently KFC are thinking of coming back or are planning to come back to just to just delivery oh really and I think and, and I think they'll do well but I think it's because a lot of people can't cook to be, be honest to be honest <laughs> with you yeah and it's, to be fair sometimes it's, it just can't be asked to cook so that is nice literally to, it it's nice that takeaways are still an option because every now and then I like, like I've got a takeaway every now and then just because why not but a lot of these like it's like I'm like it's, it's good to see a lot of people adapting and even in and even in that sense hiring people for like delivery drivers and and also so there has been some work for some people and some people who maybe would have got made redundant or basically didn't have a way of getting any income and this had this has been a good way of them to get an income in this situation by basically picking up another career and just yeah on that point and... on that point just to add to your point as well sorry uh, to, to button <laughs> like it's it's not only that is a very good point because it's not just in as deliveries as well but how about like places like tesco's and stuff you need yeah of course yeah yeah, right? yeah, yeah. um yeah so like tesco's sainsbury's i think 
they've all had like literally like thousands of extra like temporary stuff to basically help them with the demand of obviously what's going on and I think that's been like I'm glad that that's worked out even like Amazon and DPD all those kind of like companies they've, they've all I think had like extra staff just for the just for the time being because everyone is obviously going doing everything through delivery now because no one's going into no one is going in store like I ordered something from a shop yesterday clothing don't ask me why because I don't know what I'm wearing it to <laughs> any time <laughs> soon but I still bought it and it came today literally next day delivery and like it's literally like I if 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 they told me it was gonna come in two weeks time I would I would have been happy with that like I wouldn't it wouldn't have been a problem because I know what situation we're in but the fact that it happened the next day or it came the next day even though of what's going on is 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 is, is, is I think it's crazy and it's it's quite impressive actually but I'm I'm kind of glad that some people like there've been other ways for other people to earn money and it hasn't been a case of just because I think it's, it's it's sometimes it's hard to stay at home doing nothing so even if like even if you just pick up another job for now whilst you while she can't do your normal job it's still something to do because I think like staying at home doing nothing can be crazy like it can it can like hundred percent agree with you it can make you a bit like I'm struggling to stay at home and I have things to do at home <laughs> like I have work to do I have things <laughs> to be fixed and even I'm going mad and I'm I don't think I people can like I, even I don't think you can even watch Netflix all day so I mean some people might it's, prove me yeah, wrong but it's, 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 not even like yeah like you'll get bored even, like, even just not watching for days and not, and not for days and weeks on on hand like you need you need that balance and I think like you so some like that's why I think like it's, it's definitely important that people go for a walk but for example like you know when the NHS asked for people to volunteer and apparently like a million people volunteered and only needed about a quarter of a million but, like, it's kind of like it's, I guess the, all those people will now have something to do and something to keep them busy while this is because people and people are like okay like stop complaining you're alive blah 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 but it's also it also can be quite stressful mentally to just be sat at home do you know what on that point right like do you know when I was saying I, I noticed a lot more people going for a walk around three o'clock in the afternoon rather than sunset I actually felt really happy to see people as I, mean, I don't know if it yeah. sounds weird but I was just like I, I felt happy it made me happy to see people does that make sense no I I, I get it like I live I'm live I'm, I'm I've come back home and to quarantine with my with my family and even I want to go out <laughs> because I don't want to see the same faces every day <laughs> <laughs> I want to see I want to see other people every day and I, and, and I feel bad for the people who live in by themselves I think that's quite that's 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 quite rough in the sense that you can't even talk to anyone like at least I have people that I can talk to during the day but there are people who literally who live by themselves right now who and I'm glad I'm glad I didn't I, I chose to come back home as opposed to stay where I was and by myself because that, that I reckon I would that would have drove me like do you think you would have lost it really <sighs> I probably, I probably would have drove home like, after, like, <laughs> like yeah, I'm not staying here. <laughs> oh no. But, but at least I, I had the option of, you know what I mean? Like I had the option of coming home to stay with my family whereas there are people who literally, they live by themselves and that's it. They don't have that option and I think like that's obviously not not ideal but that is the, the, that is the case and that's the scenario that is for some people. Do you know when you were talking about having something to do i think i have a lot of respect for people like for example the you mentioned about people volunteering to help out with the nhs and i have a lot of respect for people who have been volunteering their time to help other people so i think last week we were talking about giving credit to let's say celebs for their acts of kindness but also i think it's been really cool to see the acts of kindness from just the general public as well so for example there's loads of welfare groups getting together there's something called the COVID mutual aid which asks for neighbours and communities to join up and support the vulnerable people in the community. There's also a lot of people going around doing shopping for the elderly or walking dogs for people who are in self-isolation or even those collecting medicine from pharmacies for others or delivering care packages. I think that's been really awesome. And also a big shout out to this Meals on Wheels thing that I heard about in Hackney, typically a cookery school that's been giving out free food for the vulnerable in Hackney. Even, Even landlords, which usually people hate <laughs> yeah <laughs> well this there's this one story that went viral because the landlord totally cut off the rent and at the same time also dropped off this shopping for one of their tenants which i thought was awesome so a lot of let's say positive light is shining on people i think this virus has shown the worst in people as well as the, the absolute best in, 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 in society and literally like obviously all the things you just mentioned when you read stuff like that it's quite like i love it like i love to hear stuff like that because i'm like this is this is how it should be anyway this is how we should all care for each other we should 
all look out for our 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 neighbors. We look out for our families. Look out for um people who like especially the vulnerable. As you say that though, like don't you find it really interesting how the government can quite easily get the homeless off the streets because they've done that. They've given almost a stat was put out very recently saying that ninety percent of those living on the streets have been offered accommodation. So why is it under normal circumstances they don't do stuff like this or at least push even harder? I think sometimes I think sometimes a lot of these things come down to money not because the government doesn't have money but because it's, it's easier to make a profit for someone else if they and right now no, like now right now we're in a case where it's not about profit for anyone i mean people are trying to just get by or people are trying to just live like you can't literally be trying to push profit so everyone so, but, but like you're right it does show that there's room for everyone to not be <laughs> yeah. homeless and there's, and there's room for everyone to eat like there's room for everyone to to actually be okay and i might sound like a socialist or whatever but it like every like there's there's enough for everyone but because of sometimes because of our greed and our selfishness some of us take more than we need and then leave some for the others or for other people and i think and, and I, oh, I honestly pray that when this is all over that kind of like that community and that we're all in this together mindset doesn't go back to what it was before and it goes it carries on and we all look out for each other and people check on their neighbors check on their elderly neighbors check on like people just to make sure that they're okay because like we said in the previous episode what a lot of us are feeling right now is what some people are feeling on the daily basis every day like in terms of like loneliness and all that kind of like do you know what I mean all that kind of stuff some people are that's their daily that's their daily life and I think the fact that we've all experienced what if, how that feels right now we can all go back and literally make sure that it doesn't like other people don't go through that and we can my question on that on that statement is though like do you think this community spirit has only been brought out because we're all going through the lockdown I mean this is going to contradict what I'm about to say afterwards but do you think that this has only come about because of the fact that we're all in lockdown together Absolutely. because I feel like afterwards when everyone goes back to their normal lives they're going to be on different paths so they're going to have different needs different mindsets and so on but right now everyone's in the same more or less in the same boat so yeah. that's where yeah, the yeah. community spirit right. is coming from yeah yeah no that makes sense and i think i guess maybe <laughs> If that when when this is when this is over, hopefully soon, everyone goes back to their own lives and if and they forget that about their neighbour who who is not on the same I guess on the same life path as them, so they look at like they'll look at them differently again, which is quite sad because right now it's like uh, we're all in this together, we're all we're all in prison, we're all trying to just get through day by day, and right now it's not really about living life to the fullest. Right now it's about surviving and just getting through this until the next until it's over, so then we can hopefully get back to normal life. I I, I as as much as I wish it would like this would carry on like in terms of our mentality and we'd appreciate each other more and care for each other more I also don't have faith that it will happen like I don't believe it will happen I don't think it will I would have been not it'd be nice if it did but I honestly don't think it will and that's quite and that's quite sad for me I think it depends on like your perspective so in many ways like the social structure will change as in a lot of people will have to adapt and there will be differences that come out of it but yes at the end of the day i feel like we're all always programmed to just go back to the way we are it happens all the time like for example whenever a tragedy happens everyone's like oh no send him love and prayers and whatnot and then it's in the news for a couple of days and then after about a week or so when it's not so mainstream news anymore everyone goes back to normal and the lessons that you would have learned in that period is sort of it just is it goes and and I feel like it's going to be in that same sort of manner because all the lessons that I've, more or less most of the lessons that everyone picks up during this time, it, everyone it, it, it won't be absorbed like anymore. Like it, it's gone afterwards. And I think this is going to be yeah a similar case in this situation. And I think, but one thing that I really wish I I, I honestly hope would 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 carry on is the appreciation for NHS, not just by us, but also by the government. And I hope the government realizes how vital this is, and that in, like if we give the NHS the proper funding and make sure it's because it's. it's Literally, like one of the like the national treasures of this country. It's like one of the greatest things about this country. And if it can, if it can, we can carry that appreciation both in terms of like how we treat stuff like, as an individual on an individual basis, as well as how the government funds it. We could like we could get so much further in terms of making sure people get the right healthcare. People get, do you know what I mean? And yeah, I, and even even if like the government doesn't, which I don't have much faith in that, even if they don't give it the right funding, I just hope that people do appreciate it and do our kind to all the staff forever. 
all the nurses who are underpaid, the doctors who are working extra hours, the, the cleaning staff, the, the porters, all those people who are underappreciated, they all understand and feel the love that people are showing them right now. And I hope that doesn't stop when this is all over. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. And even like talking of like funding, like the NHS and stuff like that. Like, I mean, I read in the news the other day that apparently they're going to start asking NHS staff to start reusing single use PPE and some of them and, so, and maybe not even using PPE in some cases because they're running out. But earlier on, they said there was going to be enough PPE for everyone. But now, apparently, they're going to, I think it's, we're literally putting people's life at risk. Like, I've, like, I've literally been seeing two, uh, like, we're sad to announce that this nurse has died. We're sad to announce that this nurse has died. Like, there, there, was, a, there was a pregnant nurse who's literally had to perform an emergency birth and she died, but her baby survived. But it was like, it's just, it's just sad. Like, this is happening. That's a crazy story, that. Wow. And we're not protecting these people who are literally trying to protect us. Like, yeah. you know, like and the thing is, when it gets to, like, there's always going to, for some reason, there's always enough money for the army. There's always enough money when it comes to war, when it comes to that kind of stuff. There was, there's no way they'd ever send the army without the right equipment or the right, do you know what I mean? Or the right stuff, basically. But how come when it's the NHS, we're asking people to reuse single-use PPE when, like, it's only supposed to be used once, which is in the name. But we're asking them to reuse it because of lack of, because of there's not enough. And I'm like, wait, what? That's, that's crazy. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I just I just think it's just crazy. But then also you hear, like, in in other like so I was reading I saw that apparently somewhere I think it was like Botswana where like the like the university had were creating like face masks and other stuff for for like the healthcare workers to protect them and I think that's happening in a lot of other countries every and even here I think it's been happening where companies and other um like other maybe universities and other schools and stuff like that are helping to create PPE basically PPE is personal pe- uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it was, it was really personal protective and, uh, equipment personal protective equipment it's like when you write an assignment you have to spell it out for people first and then you can say yeah yeah because remember that, I said, I was, I was the same PPE but people were like some people might be like what's PPE what is yeah. PPE yeah yeah personal protective equipment um, so stuff like gloves face masks aprons lab coats all that kind of stuff that, those are all stuff that are classed as PPE but yeah it's just so I, like it's nice to see that some people are helping out but the people that are, that should be making sure that these people have enough are telling them to basically just reuse it or not, not have it at all and just work without it and yeah it's just it's not great so it's really not and that that, uh, that honestly makes me sad to think about it but you got to ha- ask like, like how did we end up in this situation why is it like this how can the I don't, I'm sure Britain is in the top 10 richest countries right like oh well we've got shed loads of debt yeah how can but I know but I'm sure it's it's, it's up there in, like the, but how can a country that's supposed to be well developed and all that kind of stuff is asking its healthcare workers to like work without the right equipment I think it's I think that's absurd and it shouldn't be happening basically because we've got our priorities elsewhere of course that's what we comes down to but i think uh, at the end of the day okay we've said that we will probably not learn from our lessons of what we've learned during this period but at the same times i feel like there will be a lot of uh, we will have a period where we self-assess our social construct i feel like there will be a low of people causing a fuss about what we've discovered during this period so I feel like there will be from what I've attained from looking at the let's say the behavior of people or patterns across social media or the news and whatnot so I feel there will be a social uprising in many different perspectives so for example like a lot of people usually say and we were alluding to it earlier when we were saying like you know everyone's in lockdown but that doesn't mean that everyone's going through the same things so yeah you can in a way say that the virus treats everyone the same is a bit of a cliche and that means that it's not actually causing everyone to go through the same experience whether it's medically socially psychologically or economically everyone's going through different experiences of the same situation and i feel like if you think about it as the months go on it's the people that's going through the toughest time that's going to fall on the biggest pressure which is just going to build up and build up and then just you, you'd have to think about what would happen when all that pressure becomes too much and for example there'll be people across the globe in for example let's say shanty towns in maybe india or south africa how are they gonna handle a situation like this because for us it's easy because we can all easily self-isolate we can all easily socially dis, uh, distance ourselves from others but other people in india india not the whole country in general but in those sort of let's call the slum regions it's not as possible for them and 
I think it will put a heavy eye on the inequality between countries, but also within the countries as well. And I feel like that is something that's going to be an interesting revelation in post lockdown. It'll be interesting how things change. Like I think obviously the world won't be the same after this. No, it won't. And I'm actually very, I'm very intrigued into what <laughs> what the world will look like <laughs> when this is when this is all over um, and how we're going to move forward. I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's yeah, it's going to be. It'll it's, be something else. I mean, uh, the thing is though everyone thinks that life is going to go instantly back to normal they say that oh like you know we're going to just go get lit straight afterwards but I was just looking at the case study in Wuhan of what life is like after lockdown so they've basically relaxed all lockdown laws of course they're still cautious here and there but they have in essence relaxed the lockdown situation but the thing is most people aren't even going out yet so for example a lot of consumer focus businesses such as restaurants are actually struggling because people are staying cautious they're a bit scared to, to go out and i remember seeing a quote from a restaurant owner in wuhan who was saying that a lot of people during their lunch times refuse to not even not so refuse but prefer not to dine out but would rather go home and eat <laughs> than go into restaurants or takeaways like we would normally do in normal under normal circumstances so we've we've said it before in previous podcasts and i think we're seeing that happen before for our eyes in Wuhan where it will have to be a slow process of people going back to normal like just because even when it happens in the UK just because they say okay lockdown's over doesn't mean things are going to return to normal straight away it's going to be a slow process <laughs> I've seen memes where people were literally like yeah when, when lockdown is over I'm still going to stay in my house for next for an extra month <laughs> just, just to make sure and I think it's going to be it's going to be like that like I'm not going to like rush out the minute this is over I'm going to I'm still going to avoid public spaces and big gatherings and all that kind of stuff and just because until we find until there's a vaccine and stuff like that we're not completely in the clear and we don't want it to basically start we don't want it to the case to start rising again so even when this is over i would i would still urge people to just stay cautious for even longer just to prevent that kind of like i'm not gonna st- i'm gonna yeah let's, let's start turning up let's go here let's go to this event let's go there let's go there i'm still gonna, i would definitely still be a bit a bit more cautious just just in case and i, I would i would actually yeah tell people to do the same do you know what well, i forgot what we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about rushing out straight after the lockdown oh yeah i can't remember what i was gonna say about that to be honest i just blanked out i don't know why <laughs> that's right Sure uh, actually no do you know what i was gonna say actually no talking about that is actually what one of our bloggers said to our listeners that is gonna be an interesting feature of the cameras of life that we will be releasing soon so watch this space regarding the cameras of blogs <laughs> good plug good plug but that that is actually what literally what they said they were talking about how actually do you know what i'm not gonna spoil it for everyone but yeah yeah it's interesting that you said that and talking about how long we're gonna be cooped up in own houses and stuff scientists are working around the clock to develop a new vaccine as well as to ease our testing routines as well there are scientists out there working 16 hours out of a whole 24 hour schedule in order to bring it out as fast as possible obviously we know that it takes sometimes years let alone uh, weeks or months so right now they're looking at in terms of testing they're trying to find ways where it will be faster and it will need less equipment equipment maybe even as simple as a pregnancy test obviously you don't pee on the test that's not what you do but things where it's as easy and, and as efficient in that sort of same manner yeah well, what, what do you think about that jace like i think it also like emphasizes just how important scientists are and also re-empho- re-emphasizes my love for science as well i think it's yeah I'm, I'm a big advocate for how important scientists are i think scientists are the best <laughs> 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 no, no but, but it's, it's, I mean... it's commendable because I feel like obviously and for the right reasons a lot of sectors get are being applauded in this period of time but I feel like scientists get left behind and not given the credit that they deserve because right now the whole world are relying on scientists to come up with a vaccine as well as testing equipment but how think, big I is that? I think in general scientists are always we're always in the back 
overwhelmed. Yeah, I agree. Because it's kind of like, so it's either the doctors who get the applause or like the, for, for treating patients or, or whatever, but the scientists are the ones that are in the background who've been working on these drugs, on these vaccines, on these, these treatment procedures, all that kind of stuff, which has been happening in the in the background for years. People don't see that. And obviously people only see when, only see like the front line, which is um, the clinical stuff. So the clinical stuff who are the ones that administer the treatment or whatever, but they don't realise that there's also important people in the background who have been testing these drugs, doing doing the data analysis, doing all like doing all these all these different things to make sure that that drug that or that pill that you're using has been has been validated, has been tested, and it's it's effective. And I think like right now, even when this happens, like yes, we're coming for NHS, which we definitely should be. Um, we definitely should be appreciating them, but people are forgetting that there's also scientists who are putting in hours and hours and hours of their lives. And some of some people have even like stopped their like as in like stopped the focus of their of their research and their study to to now work on COVID and they're they're putting in hours and hours and no one's recognizing them and of course I'm not saying like scientists definitely believe me scientists definitely don't do this for recognition because for sure for sure <laughs> well but that's the same in the same manner the doctors don't do what they're doing for recognition as well course, but I feel course. like scientists should also be given some sort of yeah, credit because should, yeah. I generally don't I mean, see do. I generally don't see a well I don't personally see a word mentioned about scientists or whatever like no not at all not at all I it's just literally about... like oh you know people are trying to bring out a vaccine as quick as possible but who's doing it how is it coming like it's never mentioned so it's like saying yeah. not pick on site like doctors and whatnot but it's, it's like saying oh a lot of people have recovered a lot of people have survived but and and not saying thanks to the doctors or whatever i don't know yeah that's just i don't know i just noticed that scientists weren't given any credit so people obviously some people definitely won't know this but even um universities and and even some industry uh, some uh, private labs have been kind of like donating equipment for all the testing like my my lab we've done um has basically given loads of equipment and now there's even like people who are going to be helping with the testing and all that kind of stuff to help basically basically help the nhs and help the and obviously these people aren't getting won't get won't get the recognition but like it's a big big kudos to all of them because they're all doing vital work which is and obviously it's all in the background and it's going to be unseen but they're doing amazing things which is going to be helping the fight against covid and like even if so if they i hope they, they get some kind of just a little something and i'm going to give them a clap because we clap for the nhs but on i'm gonna podcast, join you on I'm gonna, that as well i'm, I gonna, think I'm gonna clap so clap for the scientists as well big up scientists pick them up pick them up yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not bi- i'm not biased because i'm a scientist by the way i'm just yeah i'm just one of my people to also get some love what they, what they deserve yeah yeah another thing i've learned from scientists this week apparently they've, they've found out the correct way on how to eat burgers and <laughs> it's funny about who came up with it as well this research believe it or not involved a team of fluid mechanics engineers and dentists <laughs> and i don't know why it took four months of research to find out how to eat a burger because obviously eating a burger always gets messy and the aim of their research was to find out how do you reduce mess the funny thing was this the research was actually published in 2014 but it only came to surface and became a viral thing recently because like we say all the time people are bored during lockdown and they find the most randomness of things what they found as according to the researchers you shouldn't hold the bun too tight if that helps so when we usually squeeze on the bun and i know when i say this people are going to think in some ways of innuendo but get your mind out of the gutter but when you squeeze on the bun too tight in the hopes that it pulls everything together it actually does the opposite and shoots everything out right the best way to do it is to put your thumb and your pinky fingers at the bottom and your three fingers at the top like a claw <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter man <laughs> oh my days oh, and, and what they also found was that flipping the burger upside down helps as well but yeah no <laughs> you need to get your mind out of the gutter <laughs> okay, okay I don't know what you thought I was thinking I was thinking about the burger <laughs> oh really <laughs> well I thought you know that's an interesting fact and if that helps Very you learn something new every day exactly some even say if you put the lettuce around the burger then it prevents the juice from falling out do you know what I mean there you go you heard it on the canvas of life <laughs> of course that's what they're in it for they're all just all nerds trying to work on things well very smart individuals working on all kinds of from covid testing to um how to eat your burger perfectly you know <laughs> exactly. everything's important <laughs> <laughs> just to change the subject a little so yeah it's another three weeks and you know what that means right that means another three weeks away from the barber how's your trim coming along man mine oh my god mine is ev- like it's huge i actually well, look I like i've do... just come fresh from bangladesh literally i usually don't um let my hair grow out because 
my hairline it's, it's peak so really uh, yeah so i am um, i always shave my hair like really 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 short but i thought you know what let me just grow it out oh, just this and, I'm, yeah. and i'm hoping i'm hoping right that um my beard comes through so i've been literally been i've been applying sheer butter and all sorts of my to basically because i, I want to come out of lockdown with a full beard i know it's gonna happen but i'm trying so i'm basically just growing everything out at the moment and see what i get to when lockdown is over then i'm gonna cut it all off again so, yeah, i think I'm yeah doing. i think that's a strategy for a lot of guys other than okay there's two different strategies because that's the only options we've got you can either shave it all off or you grow it out like a grizzly bear and then see what it looks like and then obviously you go straight to the barbers but imagine how much pee barbers are gonna make on the first week or so on the first yeah we're, yeah. we're not gonna go far there ah you know the you know that um <laughs> that picture of the guy from Breaking Bad when he's lying on all the money yes yes that's yeah, gonna be the that's barbers gonna be, that's gonna be the barbers all the barbers they're gonna be 100% in, in 100% and also like uh, not just barbers but also like nail technicians and oh yeah all those kind of people who do like because obviously beauticians. Like, a lot of people yeah all those beauticians they're gonna be in they're gonna be taking it in taking in all the money uh, and they should be it's been it's been a rough couple of months so far so when this is all over they need to they need to make make that money back oh that's so true that's so true because they can't do anything I guess right if you, if you live with if you live I mean to be fair I could my I could just shave my hair bald but I just want to grow it out to see what I'd look like what I look like without cutting my hair <laughs> like regularly so yeah it, nah, it is actually peak for me at the moment uh, it, it's do you know it's really funny it because it it's funny because in the space of a couple of days my hair went from it's calm to bang it, it's gone wild because I remember a few days ago I was like yeah hey, what it's been three four weeks and it's still calm and then literally two days later i was like what the hell has happened to my hair i've also run out of hair wax and everything so i legit just look it just looks fro it's wavy to have a curl to it but it's fine you know ah, it's, it's fine. not like we're going out you just put it yeah it doesn't it doesn't matter the only people who can see it are or who see it are people we live with and they don't care we'll see that our worst exactly so they don't care yeah just let it let it be. Don't stress. I I stop stressing about it. I just let it go. See what happens at the end, and then I cut it all off when it's when it's over. Get a proper haircut. So do you know, two episodes ago, you were singing Drake Tusi slide. Yeah, right foot up. Firstly, it's foot such slide. a catchy song as well. Left it's a very simple up, song. Right foot slide. Do you know what? Okay, tell your facts. I've got I've got another, I've got an interesting fact for you. Go on. Now you tell me. You tell me. You tell me. You tell me. You tell no, me. no, 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 no. You go first. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay 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 no i was just gonna say i just saw it the other day well when i said the other day i mean like literally a couple of hours ago but the fact that not only did tusi slide go number one but drake has become the first male artist to debut three songs at number one and that is one of numerous other records of drake so for example he also has is the first to have 27 songs in the hot 100 he's also got a record for having seven songs in the top 10 which is mad seven songs in the top 10 from just from one artist and that's bre breaking a record held all the way back from the Beatles he's also the first artist to drop four songs in the top 10 at the same time and many more even the fact that he's the first artist alongside Michael Jackson to have 30 songs accumulatively in the top 10 so that all these records just makes me ask like where does he come at the end of it like where where do we put him is he regarded as a goat is he regarded as a great and yeah and like what what sort of genre do we put him in because he's done so many things i don't even class him as a rapper anymore he's not really a rapper to me you mentioned michael jackson right so drake is a fake oh. you heard it from me you heard it from me jason from the podcast of life is telling you this people drake is unoriginal do you know why why the tootsie slide it's the moonwalk Boom. It's actually oh it's wow the moonwalk. think about it left foot up right foot slide right foot up left foot slide do it and do the moonwalk it is the same <laughs> thing <laughs> unoriginal <laughs> I swear, I don't know. It is the moonwalk. Believe me, <laughs> it is the moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big accusation to make. I mean, that's not to say that Drake isn't someone who likes to take inspiration. It is the moonwalk. <laughs> So I'm guessing you're you're not gonna hold him as a great then. Oh no, of course no. I I think I think I think he's top. I think he's up there because his numbers. He's don't up lie. there in what regards though? In terms of, like his the numbers numbers don't lie, and when it comes to the numbers, he's up. There as 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 like, my favorite one of my favorite quotes: "The proof is in the pudding." The proof is in the exactly, pudding. Exactly. And as much as I think he's one of the most disrespected artists, I agree because people think he doesn't like he. Like, and I, I can't understand why people are sometimes are a bit like, yeah, he's stealing the style. He's always trying. He's try, always trying to go to what's popping. But I think people forget that he also gives 
people the limelight and helps build people people's careers. So it's almost like a give and take. So if okay, fair enough. Like he think so. He's smart. He's smart. Do you know what? He does a lot of research. He does a lot of research. And obviously, when you do that much research, you're gonna pick up traits and abilities here and there. And but that's what makes him so great is because that he he's he's so committed to the game. And of course, that is a reason why he's so successful. But he's so committed to it that he's always broadening his horizon. And I don't think people understand that let's say trait of artistry or being a craftsman where nothing is original you have to learn and be inspired from places here and there and that's when it starts showing in your art absolutely and i think um like even even like the tootsie slide right it is it is genius because like i said it is the moonwalk so yeah. it's not original but even the idea of the song is not original at all because he basically i think he like he got some dancers to create a dance that would go viral because, of, the, so because of what's happening sense, yeah. on tiktok because you know at the moment all everyone's doing is dancers on tiktok so to, like so there's if like you make a choreography um, a dance and it goes on tiktok everyone does it and it blows up people and it's just what was that song that he got trolled on where he, that that was a song that made him go um, into a megastar I, I uh, it's the one where he's dancing in like a colorful background oh um, everyone was taking the pee out Blink. that's the one yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the song that made him like it literally took him out from literally just the standard rapper into something no, a bit more mainstream or overall like it, do you disagree, disagree with that yeah. okay let, let me just say let me just let me just say this quickly take care, take care. It's, it's my favorite jake album but what i, I mean think... yeah it's a great album but what i'm saying is it made him a lot more mainstream because when take care was about and the only people that listened to it were people who were in that sort of let's say hip-hop urban rap sort of those who love that genre but when that came out and made him go viral and made him a meme that's when he became more main mainstream in my opinion because that was his first number one that was his first number one believe it or not really yeah that was his first number one and from then he went from strength to strength very surprising i think maybe maybe because i've, I've known him yeah so he was to big to us for years yeah he was big to us but in that really? regards that's of i thought he was way big the way before that he was big before but he wasn't big 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 in, a, in that sense yeah so that's very, very interesting actually yeah because I think we always forget that people are big to us because that's they're in our bubble so yeah, they're big in our bubble but there's a lot yeah. yeah so people say for example let's go really far into another genre but people listening to country music wouldn't know who Drake is but since he became big boy mainstream that's when people even who listen to other sort of genres will be like yeah I know who Drake is oh yeah of course I've heard Tusi Slide because it's always on the radio or Hotline Bling because I've seen it on YouTube that's the difference between being a big mm, star okay. Yeah, I so that. I think in terms of let's say commercial genius I think Drake is up there very high definitely I think yeah like no I think when it comes to I don't think he's the most original he's not he's the most original artist but what he does well is make songs that go viral and go mainstream and bring in the numbers and therefore bring in the money he I wouldn't like he, like I wouldn't say he's necessarily like the best rapper or necessarily the best singer or whatever but what he what he does bring what he does do brings in the numbers and that's I guess fair play to him I still Still think his best work is the Take Care album, which was his second studio album. But you know, and that was years. I think that's over. That's probably like nearly ten years ago. I think that album was. That was so a great I, album. I, I honestly thought that he he was big, but before that. So I guess if not, if if he wasn't big, but then fair play to him. Like I think he's one of the few artists that could basically announce, like for example, could announce a world tour and would sell out. I think he's up there with Beyonce. Trying to think who else is up there. Maybe like. But uh, then at the same time, I think Eminem could do as well easily. It just he doesn't like to talk maybe I don't know maybe I, I know. think so I think so I really do easily well, Ed Sheeran maybe what's, easily what's Ed Sheeran 100% yeah. 100% Adele just, might, need to, <laughs> yeah, might need to having split yeah she might need to start <laughs> make some new moves to give back her money <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like I think maybe Rihanna 100% The fact that she hasn't Made an album in time Or whatever Yeah It's all people ask her On her social media It's like where's the album when she, I think she put in Like in a video Where she was saying that She's literally trying to Save people's lives And trying to donate money To people to help With the virus And people are still asking her About a damn album Like yeah. Ain't people got Sense of awareness It's ain't the time For an <laughs> album man <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to provide man <laughs> Nah yeah But yeah I, Fair play to him He knew He knew He, he knew the formula Which was make a song with a, with a like make a catchy song with a dance that would go well on TikTok and it did and it blew 
them up. And like, it's the same with, um, like, I think, like, a lot of these songs are down challenges. These people are literally killing them. So, I don't know if you know, so Young T and Bugsy, right? They've got a song with Don't Rush. Yeah. That song, I, I oh, love that yeah. song. When it came out, yeah, yeah, yeah. an absolute banger, right? It came out last year at some point. But that song has probably made more money in the last few weeks than it probably did before. Because people started doing the Don't Rush challenge. Well, the girls were doing, like, the makeup and then changing the outfit. It's gone whatever. big in the US, hasn't it? And it's gone big in the US. And when this is all over, they're, they're, they're now going to get, like, new fans because people are going to listen to like oh this song is actually good it's actually good I wonder who made it and that's how, exactly. you, that's how they're probably going to get new fans exactly and I was so surprised when it was that song so basically every time I used to scroll on my TL I used to see the people doing their version of the Don't Rush Challenge but I never clicked on the video because I was like ah this looks stupid I'm not watching it and the one time I chose to click on it and I heard the music I was like wait what because this was like some big American brand that was redoing yeah. it and I was like wait what the hell <laughs> is this Don't Rush <laughs> I was like no way so I was like pretty impressed but that is the way to do it these days like you yeah know, literally if it catches and, on and Drake saw that and Drake did the same thing and now he's and, and, and you know what I mean so it's not original but a pretty damn smart so fair play to the geezer yeah but that again like just a quick point it doesn't the, I feel like a lot of people are very sensitive over unoriginality but the biggest most successful people act on the fact that if you're gonna be successful you just copy and paste but you do something better and a lot of companies yeah. do that but that is literally a formula of success and that's not from me that is from you ask any bond that's successful you have you in a time and place that we're at it's all about learning around you and adapting and enhancing but anyways I don't want to get too serious about stuff but that is how you do it so there is nothing I mean, wrong in my opinion called, with Drake I said Drake wasn't original in his music and the tip is actually the moonwalk I still I, I'm still a fan of Drake um, so <laughs> if you ever listen to this podcast um, Drake <laughs> I'm a fan please give me a ticket to your next concert Jace it's not a case of if it's a case of when <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you listen to this podcast, follow me. Let's chat business. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no. So just to quickly, let's say to recap on uh, on the questions I asked. So do you regard him as one of the greats? Do you regard him as a goat? What genre does he fall in? Pop, not rap. No, nah. I, I think he would agree with you. Nah, he, no, he wants to go into. Uh, <laughs> he wants to be known as you know the what do you call it the reggae sort of. Yeah, that's it. He, like, that's the, the thing. Is he keeps trying new things. He tried to he tried to jump on a Latin. Scene. He tried to jump on the Afrobeat scene. Now he's trying to go for the like the dancehall kind of vibe. Like he's does he he's done R and B. He's done hip hop. He's like I think he's quite multifaceted and can, he can fit in many genres. Oh, but, but you know what? Again, I think because ask... because of how mainstream he is, I think he's I think he's just a pop star. I think he's just pop. To be honest with you. But the thing that annoys me is that people a lot of people look down on people trying to try different things. So people think the fact that he shows up and does Latin music and whatnot, people actually find that they dislike it. And I don't, I, I think it's just like, so what? Like, what's wrong with people trying out different things? I think a lot of music heads are people who think they're like, oh, so underground. And yeah, I'm going to listen to this artist because they haven't, blah, blah, blah. And this artist is a sellout. This artist is a sellout. This artist, blah, blah, blah. I think why, if you're a fan of someone, why does it matter if they've blown? Like, it's the same way a lot of people like, oh, like Stormzy is, isn't, he's not proper grime. He's not, he's not rap. He's, he's like, he's now a pop star as well. Okay, so okay, if he is, so what? Let people do their thing. Let people be creative and the way they want to be do you know what I mean like life is sometimes I think we need to forget that life is too short to be defined by one thing and if people want to try new things and try new music and try new like sometimes it might work sometimes it might not but if so if like for example I've listened to some people's albums and I thought yeah this ain't it for me but I still go back to the old album and listen to it because that's what I like so like you go back to what you like and support the person that you that you like it's not like they don't have to just because you've you've put them in a box doesn't mean that they they have to stay there I I'm learning just from our own experiences like when we're we're doing creative stuff I'm, I'm learning not to think about what people would like and more so what what i'm trying to express if that makes sense and that was like i was listening to an interview from nwa and they were being interviewed by kendrick lamar and ice cube and dre said exactly what i just said it's about if you're thinking about what other people want you're never going to be true to yourself as a creative and Perfect. yeah i think that that's that's one thing that i i, I think, think that's that's a, in, in life as well not just creative yeah. If, yeah. you're doing, if you're doing what you think other people will want and you're not doing things that will make you happy you're not living your life to the fullest you know there you go another i think this has been a very
very enlightening episode of the COVID specials. It's been good stuff. And on that note, I think we should I think we should start wrapping up. Quick, quick insight on the stats so far. So how far? How many weeks? Are we like four weeks in? Mm, this is the fifth episode. So it's the fifth week in this episode. I guess so. So five weeks I in. 2.3 mil cases globally. 600,000 have recovered. So that, that number up. is picking up. Pick them up. Yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, 160,000 deaths. But yeah, no, we're past two mil. Let's, let's hope this is dealt with as soon as possible. Just, you know, stay inside, people. I think let's take it seriously. Um, like, if, let's help the NHS. Let's appreciate them. Let's let's help them as much as we can by staying inside. And what about for our global listeners? Help your also do the same. So also stay help their healthcare workers and by help your inside, NHS. Stay, help your NHS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just like let's, let's care for everyone. Like let's not, let's not just think about ourselves. Let's think about everyone else and how they're and let's keep that momentum even after lockdown. Por favor. Any recommendations? I <laughs> would again recommend. Mr. Robot <laughs> I don't think I've recommended that before but 100% please watch Mr. Robot because otherwise you will be miss- missing out and like I said the previous week if you are a smart person you will love it and if you're not you won't so there's a challenge for yourself to find out whether you are an intellect oh and I would also recommend re-watching How I Met Your Mother because damn I did not realise I missed it so much as much as I did when I was watching it so that's my other recommendation that's my visual entertainment recommendation and I would also recommend learning a language because you never know when you might need it mm, okay what are you learning at the moment? Italian yeah. yes Buongiorno. Yeah. <laughs> No, but Junior is hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wait. What? What are you? What are you? Um. Learning. I'm, I'm still doing French. Still French. Yeah. Yeah. Won't you try Mandarin? Won't you try Mandarin out for a bit? That was when I was going to. That was when I went. When I went to China, I just wanted to learn a few words, a few phrases before I went. Yeah. Fair enough. So, so what's back, your recommendation? I, I think I definitely, I definitely back the learning language. I enjoy it. Like I'm, I'm I find it quite difficult to like. I'm, like sometimes I get really confident that I can, that I know a lot. But then when I, I listen to, I listen to maybe I go on like a like a video and try and listen to what they're saying or try to read something. I'm like oh I actually don't know as much as I, I think I do so I need to go back and start learning even more so I know the basics quite well but it's kind of like it's kind of going from like intermediate to like I feel like I'm in that intermediate section I need to go it's about trying to get from there to basically like a, a fluent read like a fluent reader and speaker so yeah I just I just need people to like speak with and listen to and I think that would help me get to that get to that isn't there an app thing. for that that you used to use yeah I'm using I'm using Duolingo no not Duolingo there was an app where you used to like talk to people from across the globe that will help you oh yeah I forgot I forgot the, I forgot the app because I remember I used, to, I, I used to grab uni, your phone yeah, I, yeah, I used to is, grab your phone and mess around on it <laughs> But the thing is, with that app, right, from what I remember, you have very basic conversations. So I say bonjour to people a lot, ça va, like that kind of stuff. Like, so literally, like you keep having the same conversation with people. So you're not actually like progressing. So that's that was the frustrating thing about but it. But surely that would be a good app to use. Like, okay, so you've learned one section and you go and use it and you test it out. And then you learn another long section and you test it out. Like maybe it could be a periodic use rather than a regular use for that app. What was it called? I, I can't remember. You actually app. can't remember? I, it's gone blank. I, I used it maybe a couple of years ago when I that's your homework years. to yeah, find out um, so yeah maybe I'll try and find out what it's called but in the meanwhile if there's any French speakers who would like to converse regularly with me to help me build my um, my French speaking and reading skills then and listening skills then yeah holler at me DM us and also to to add from last week as well, we still haven't had a singer. So if you can sing and want to teach us that, then just just slide in our yeah, DMs. Yeah, holla, holla in the DMs. And like one more recommendation as well. Like, yeah, I, I would stress that, not stress, but I would advise that you indulge in your creative side because obviously like me and Jason started out the podcast and I've also been like re-engaging with my creative side in in, in terms of making videos and, and content here and there and I think it's really cool to it's one f- having a creative outlet is really important in a time like this when you're not going Absolutely. out as much it's a great way to express yourself so that's another recommendation from me or us yeah but yeah that, I, I would back that as well. I would say from us as well because like, I would definitely back that I would also say <laughs> it happens to the best of us <laughs> try and find a book and read um just like i think reading is so underrated i love reading i read a lot of books but sometimes i, I don't get the time to because i read so much kind of like prof- like work stuff so so much scientific papers and stuff like that i don't always get the time to read for fun or read for pleasure so like this week i started reading an, a new book which has been on my list for a few months it's called americana by chimamanda ngozi who is a nigerian author she's one of my favorite authors actually because i've read quite a few of her books like purple hibiscus which is which is a, an amazing book she also she also wrote the book half of a 
that's half of a yellow. Oh, I forgot half of half of a yellow flower or something. I actually forgot what it's called. But it also got made into a film with what's what's the what's my man's name from Doctor Strange, the black guy. Bened- oh, black guy. <laughs> no, Benedict Cumberbatch. He's not the black guy. <laughs> um, team. She- it's like Chico. Ah, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. He turned. He turned into like the villain in like the end. That's what. That's what the book is called. Chibotel Yadov. Yeah, the fo- yeah. yeah, that's him. Edjo, Edjo, yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, him. I forgot. His, yeah, him. So yeah, she wrote that book as well. Which is which. So the book is good. The the film is not, in my humble opinion. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm reading Americana. It's a really good book so far. And yeah, it's been nice just to have have that. I guess that break from kind of like reading pa- like normal papers and or scientific papers, I should say, and just reading something which is just for fun and. Also so yeah and what am I watching at the moment I, I'm watching the last few episodes of the, la- of the last season of Modern Family like I said it's, it's up there for me on one of the best shows so if you've never watched it before check it out it's it's a, it's a feel good series oh and I finished La Casa de Papel oh my goodness that's show... great wasn't it we're gonna have to leave that for the next episode yeah we'll chat about next that. episode we're talking about it bro ah oh, man lit 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 I mean, with our recommendations, we sound like parents <laughs> talking to our children, like, read books, <laughs> do this yeah. and that. <laughs> read books, learn the language. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's a good oh, way to exercise. end it. Exercise, people. Exercise. And, and exercise as well. Exercise. And eat, eat your greens, water. eat your vegetables, stay healthy, and yeah. all of that stuff. All of that, yeah. So, to end what it then, you, Jason, you want to lead away with the socials? Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Instagram is yes. <laughs> of dot life. Yeah. Twitter, Canvas of Life One. Facebook, Canvas of Life. Um, and soon I will tell you our website. But Jeez, you're not smashing yet. it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, not the website yet, please. Not yet, not yet. But oh my and god, also, the website is gonna bang. We have a couple of videos on there, but when this lockdown is over, we've got some some cool ideas which we're gonna we can't wait to share with you guys. But yeah, as I always say, stay safe, stay inside, and stay blessed. It's been a pleasure. Till next time. 